Tell Dr. Conway that we're here. Morning. It's good to see you. Thank you, Charles. This is Grace Thomas, the patient I phoned you about. Dr. Conway. I'm pleased to meet you, Miss Thomas. Dr. Wright has told me a great deal about you. Shall we go up to my study? Miss Thomas, I'd like to meet my assistant, Dr. Gilchrist. I'm pleased to meet you, Miss Thomas. We're delighted to have you join us here. We've been expecting you. I have some things to do, Doctor. If you'll excuse me. Certainly. Now, shall we make ourselves comfortable? Charles, I, I finally convinced Grace that the best thing for her would be to place herself in your care and that with your help, her recovery here would be a certainty. Thank you, Lauren. I'm sure we'll do everything possible to make your stay here pleasant and comfortable. Your decision to come here was indeed a wise one. I hope you'll be able to help me. I'm sure I can. To start with, we'll see that you get plenty of fresh air and rest. Then, of course, my treatments, I'm sure you'll be benefited by them. My dear, you're a very lucky girl. Dr. Conway is one of the finest men in the field. I think you're most fortunate that he has accepted your case. I'm very grateful. If you don't mind, Doctor, I'd like to show Miss Thomas to her room. Sure. Come with me, Grace. I'll see that you're comfortably settled. Oh, uh, by the way, Grace, I'll get in touch with your father and ask him to send you the things that you'll need. I'm sure he'll be most pleased with your decision. Thank you. Good night, Grace. Good night. I'll look in on you before you retire. Father, what's this business about a father? No need to get excited, Charles. Everything's been taken care of. Our agreement was that the patients you brought to me were to have no relatives, no ties whatsoever. And I tell you that this one has no ties. Precisely what does that mean? Grace Thomas committed suicide. Committed suicide? Yes. Her bag and coat will be found floating in the bay. I think you'll find this room comfortable. And don't worry, we have everything you need right here until your clothes arrive. You're very kind. These things should fit you. You'll find the other things you want in the bath. It's awfully good of you. Not at all. Now I'll be back later and bring you some warm milk. And we'll give you a little sedative. Make you wake up rested. To youth. To eternity. I'm more than anxious to see your last experiment on Jedro, Charles. Jedro? Very well. Come with me, I'll show you. Is this Jedro? Of course it's Jedro. This is the first such reaction I've had. When we attempted to activate the glandular flow, he slipped into this state of suspended animation. Automatic paralysis. Probably internal radiation burn. Will he be all right? I'm afraid not. Well, perhaps you could uh, counteract the treatment. Oh, that's impossible. Then what are we going to do? Wait. Wait in the hope that he comes out of this state of shock. If there's been no permanent injury to the brain, he may recover. And if not? If not, then, Lauren, we continue our experiments further. We must have younger subjects. Radiation must be carefully calculated in relation to the subject's age and metabolism. Somehow there must be a way. But isn't it possible to do something to restore him back to normal? Why are you so concerned about him? I'm afraid we're in a bit of difficulty. What do you mean difficulty? What difficulty? A relative of his showed up. A relative? Harry Jedro has a sister. She's been to my office trying to locate him. So? Jedro never said anything about a family. I took it for granted. You took it for granted. In science, nothing is taken for granted. But what are we going to do? What did I tell his sister? That, my dear fellow, is your problem. Wait in my office for me. I've got to see Grace. Come in, Lobo. Go ahead.
my dear, you look radiant. If I were Rembrandt, I'd paint a portrait of you. Tell me, you comfortable here? Yes. I like it here very much. Good. Now tell me, my dear, what seems to be bothering you? I don't know, Doctor. I'm always so frightened. Frightened of what, Grace? I'm just afraid. Well, you mustn't be afraid, not of anything. Often I want to cry, just cry. You know, I, I have no one to turn to. Now, now, my dear, from now on that'll all be different. I want you to have absolute confidence in me. Trust me implicitly and come to me with your problems, no matter what they are. Yes, Doctor. And tonight, I want you to have a good night's rest. Tomorrow, you'll feel better. I'll try. You're very young and beautiful. Most women would envy your loveliness. I feel your life has been empty of certain things that are due a young girl. Affection, attention. You're very kind to me, Doctor. Now, my dear, I want you to promise me one thing. You're not to discuss your affairs with anyone but me. You understand? Yes, Doctor. Dr. Wright is waiting for you in your office. Oh, thank you. I almost forgotten. Well, good night, my dear. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Doctor. Mm-hmm. I've just looked in on Grace. I don't anticipate any great difficulty in getting her straightened out. Well, I'm glad, and I hope she makes an excellent subject for you. I've given her the sedative. Thank you, Sharon. I'll be getting back to town. Uh, good night, Sharon. Good night, Charles. Good night, Lauren. Oh, these must be Grace's. I'll take them to her. What's that? I'll take these to Grace. No. Let me have them. Norman, you're getting careless. You forgot these. Oh, I... Well, I am sorry, Charles. Good night. Good night. him in the garden. Huh? What were you doing there? I was trying to find my way back to civilization. They've been hitchhiking. The guy dropped me off in the middle of nowhere and I got lost. I don't think so. Look, mister, I know what you got in the back of your mind, but you're wrong. I didn't come here to steal anything. Then why have you come here? I told you, I got lost. You told me a fabricated story which wouldn't convince a child. No, Mr. Scott, you're not being very clever at all. Scott? Where'd you get that name? My name's Houston, Mark Houston. You're Frank Scott, killer and thief. <laughs> you got the wrong boy. Are you sure? I don't think I have. There was a detailed description of you in the police bulletin this morning. You're wanted for killing a man in a holdup. You're sick, mister. You ought to see a doctor. I happen to be a doctor, and I'm in full possession of my faculties. You see, last night's paper carried your story in the front page. Leather jacket, about six feet tall. All right, I wear a leather jacket and I'm not a midget, so what? Nothing. Here, have a cigarette. Thanks. Just as I thought, Frank Scott. You seem to be a bit wobbly. I'm all right. Why don't you sit down? No, I'll stay. Sit down. You must be out of your head. 
Why else would a man wander 20 miles from civilization? I told you exactly how it happened. I hardly think so. You know, I pity you. Look, Doc, the last thing I need right now is pity. Let's just call it a day, huh? We'll say it's been charming and I'll be on my way. Your persistence is admirable, but highly impractical. I have no intention of turning you over to the police. Perhaps I don't believe in capital punishment. Oh, I have a better idea. I'm willing to offer you sanctuary. Here. Sanctuary for me? Well, that's real fine. Except nobody does something for nothing. I'm happy you've decided to be honest with me. I haven't decided a thing. I'm just curious. I'd really like to find out what it is you want from me. Perhaps some assistance. I might easily use a man like you. I don't follow you. You will, Scott. I'll explain further, but it's late. I suggest we both retire and we take up the details of our little bargain in the morning. Now, wait a minute. I didn't make any bargain. Oh, yes, you have. You made your bargain when you pulled the trigger and shot that man down. I suggest you keep that in mind. You're a killer, Scott, a hunted man. Take all the help you can get. It may mean the difference between life and death. Yeah. You've got this pretty well figured out, haven't you? I am a scientist. Thinking is my business. All right. I guess you win. I'm afraid it has to be right, doesn't it? Uh, take Mr. Scott, or uh, Mark Houston, if you want it that way. Take him to his room. See that he has some other clothes. Here, take you to your room. Yeah, I know. Doc, I'm afraid you're a very clever man. Thank you, Mr. Houston. Cold. Eat, he says. Food and nutrition are important, he says. What a sap I was to get myself stuck in a stinking joint like this. Six weeks of get up, go to bed, do this, don't do that, walk here, sit there. Like an animal in the zoo, they got me all caged up. You know, I've had a lot of time to think since I've been here. I'm telling you, I'm gonna get out of here. Yeah, it's about time you got here with that toast. Now maybe the eggs won't taste so bad. Yeah. Cold. You can't do anything right. Now, what are you looking at me like that for? Go on, get back to the kitchen, you make me nervous. You make me nervous. Why do you have to pick on him like that? He's nice to you and you're always on his back. I'd like to break his neck. Look, put that book down, will you? Listen to me. How long do you think the doc can keep me here? Listen to this. I want to listen to nothing. Her hair fell free and hung thick and soft on her white shoulders. Suddenly he released her and she slipped from his strong arms. A wave of weakness swept through her body. Junk. It's none of your business what I read. I don't like you reading when I'm talking to you. There's no reason for you to throw my books around either. I'd like to take all them books and throw them into a furnace. Guys make a fortune scribbling junk like that, and idiots like you spend your life reading it. Oh, you're in a lousy mood. It's a lousy world. So you fight everything and everybody, right? Yeah, do you know any other way? Morning. Wow, hello. I'm Mark Houston. I'm Natalie Andrews. Sourpuss over there is Danny Green. He's wearing a chip on his shoulder this morning, but once you get used to him, he gets worse. Coffee? Yeah, thanks. When did you get here? Last night, late. You don't know how glad I am to see a new face around here. If I had to put up with Smiley over there another day, I think I'd scream. So scream. What brought you here? I know that's a little blunt, but let's face it, we're all in the same boat. Yeah, that we are. I really won't know what brought me here until I talked to the doc this morning. What about you? Oh, I guess I was kind of run down. Just couldn't coordinate myself. Sort of mixed up, too. But I've been here four months, and I'm in the pink. That doctor sure snapped me out of it. I might be going home soon. <laughs> home soon? Home to what? You got nobody waiting for you. You feel fine? OK, don't tell me about it. I ain't fine. I ain't fine at all. That's not a very nice way to talk to a lady. I don't want to talk to that lady at all. Keep her off my back. And you keep off my back, too. I don't want to talk to nobody. Nobody wants to hear what you like and don't like either, but that doesn't stop you from complaining all the time. Don't listen. Seems to me you've started all this. If you want to argue and complain, go out and scream at the wall, but don't do it here. I don't like it. What you don't like don't matter. Doesn't make any difference what you don't like. I can say whatever I want and whoever I want. It don't Before matter. Before you do any more, Sam, you better do some listening. 
I'm going to be here for a while and we'll have to get along. The only way we'll do that is if you start acting like a man instead of a school kid. Now, you come walking in here out of the clear blue sky and act like a big wheel. Well, listen, big wheel, I ain't having any here. I ain't having any. Don't act with a big wheel with me. Come here for one day. I ain't having any here. I ain't having any. Don't act with a big wheel with me. Does he get like that very often? Two or three times a day. I don't know what gets him so steamed up. Probably doesn't know himself. Excuse me. What about your coffee? It's cold. That's what to do. But your picture, that's what they are. Don't do this. Don't do that. He's having his trouble again, Doctor. Give him the usual amount of R16. Yeah. Yes, Doctor. Yeah. Do this. Don't do that. Big shot. Everybody's a big shot. That's what you like. Come on, hurry up with that, will you? Will you hurry up with that? I'm burning up. All right, Dan, you'll be fine in a minute. Uh. I've seen guys go through that before. You feel better now, Danny? We knocked before entering a room here. What do you want? I thought you might like a little help. I've had some experience with guys like this. I've taken care of him. Or well, thank you, anyway. Take him to his room. Let him have some rest for a while. Come on, Danny. Come in, Mark. I'm glad to hear you're willing to help. You're a clever young man. I've decided you can be of assistance to me. I'm real handy to have around. Especially if you want somebody to bandage a gunshot wound. That's not exactly what I had in mind. I said last night we'd have a little talk this morning. All right. You talk and I'll listen. I've dedicated my life to a medical project that most scientists consider beyond the realm of possibility. But believe me, it's not impossible. To the true scientist, nothing is impossible. Look here. Every human body has 16 glands. Here, for instance, is the thyroid gland, which controls human growth. And up in here, the pituitary, which contains a proper balance when a man is fully grown. My researches on these glands have taken me far beyond what was formerly known to be fact. I have the secret of life, of growth, and the cause of death. Uh, that should make you man of the year. Huh? This is not to be taken lightly. Sorry, Doc. And you know the glands control our size, our shape, and even our intelligence. I've discovered that dwarfs and giants are made by the effect of vitamins on certain of the endocrine glands. What do you suppose would happen if we could control the flow of vitamins to those glands? I don't know. I guess you could, uh, you could create a dwarf or a giant whenever you wanted to. Exactly. My servant Lobo proves that theory. He came a puny, broken man. Now he possesses the strength of an Hercules. And the brain of a chicken. Unfortunate. His brain was injured and there was nothing I could do for him. So now you've got yourself an overgrown moron for a pet, huh? You're an understanding man. One of the few I've ever met. I have discovered how to add to the 16 existing glands a 17th one. Artificially developed. A new gland. A new gland? What for? This 17th gland is the secret of youth and eternal life. With it, the aging process can be arrested. I can prolong life for thousands of years, perhaps forever. Forever's a long time, Doc. It's possible, Mark. Think of it. To be always exactly as you are now. To see the pages of life go by you while you remain eternally young and vigorous. Suppose you could wake up every morning and see your face untouched by time. Me? Yes, you, Mark. You. You can be the first man to have eternal life. Oh, thanks, Doc. I'm happy just like I am. Mark, to prove my theory, I need a completely sound human specimen. Mentally and physically perfect. You are that specimen. That's where you're wrong. The whole idea is fantastic. It's crazy. Why is it crazy? Because it's never been done before? Because it can't be bought in a drugstore? They've always called the greatest scientists crazy. Pasteur, Freud, Madame Curie, Ehrlich, many of them. I know my theory is right. I proved it. Eternal life, Mark. No, not for me, Doc. Like I said before, I'll stay just like I am. And be burned in the electric chair? I'd rather do that than be a guinea pig for you. Mark, this is not the first time a condemned man's life has been offered to him in return for the progress of science. I haven't been condemned yet, Doc. 
Perhaps not, but you're concerned about nothing. I'll take every precaution. The final process will be tested and retested before your final treatment. Tested, huh? So that's what those other people are here for? Of course. They're just rungs in the ladder I have to climb. In science, there's always been some necessary sacrifices. No, I don't want any part of it. No use talking anymore, Doc. I'm going to get out of here. Very well. I'm sorry our agreement didn't work out. Shall I call the police now to come and pick you up? You wait a minute. You tell the police about me, I'll have a few things to tell them about you. And who believe you? Will the police accept your word against mine? You're a hunted man. I happen to be a reputable scientist. Besides, if you were to repeat what I told you, you wouldn't have the proof to substantiate your story. Well, what's it going to be, Mark? Shall I call the police and subject us both to a duel of wits? A duel I'm bound to win? No. I'm glad you decided to see it my way. I don't have much choice, do I? A very sensible conclusion. Now, you are not to discuss or disclose my conversation or my plans in any way, to anyone, at any time, anywhere. Do you understand? When I talk about something nobody believes. Don't worry, Doc. I'll keep my mouth shut. Fine. Now we can start. Old age will be conquered. And you'll be here to accept the acclaim of a grateful world. Oh. Grace, this is a wild book. Here, I want you to read it. I have to go now. I have to see the doctor. Be seeing you later, honey. Hi. Morning. I was hoping you'd show up. Thought we'd get a little better acquainted. Oh? Gonna be around later? Well, I didn't have any other plans. I have to see the doc right now, but that won't take long. Good. In that case, I'll see you after a while. Bye. <laughs> Morning. My name's Mark Houston. And what's yours? What's the matter? Don't you want to talk to me? Grace Thomas. Grace. Pretty name for a pretty girl. You been here long, Grace? Yesterday. Makes two of us. I got here last night myself. I didn't think I was going to like it being so far from everything, but uh, now it doesn't seem so bad. Tell me, what do you know about the place? Nothing. Why would you happen to come here? My doctor brought me. He said I'd get well here. Get well? You look fine. What's supposed to be wrong with you? I, I guess you could call it a nervous breakdown. I've been very upset and afraid. Afraid of what? I don't know. Well, sooner or later, everybody's afraid of something. Now, you take me. Yesterday, I was afraid plenty. But today, it's different. Today, everything's right with the world. I got a nice place to stay, plenty of fresh air to breathe, and uh, real pleasant company. I wish it were that easy for me. What's Dr. Conway say? I can't talk about it. Why not? Dr. Conway wouldn't like it. No, I guess he wouldn't. Are you going to be here long? Yeah, it looks that way. We'll be seeing a lot of each other. That'll be nice. As long as we're going to be here for a while, we ought to see what the place looks like. How'd you like to take a walk? Well, I'm supposed to rest. You've been resting. I guess it will be all right. Check, Jedro? Yes. Well? Pulse normal, heartbeat faint but regular, respiration steady, reactions none. No change, huh? None. It lands adapted itself perfectly. Well, we can't check the reaction until he emerges from the cataleptic state. There should have been some change by now. Yes, I don't understand. Well, we just have to wait. Can you suggest any further treatment, Charles? No. If we interrupt the process now, we won't have the information we want. We'll just have to wait. Hello? It's Lauren. Oh. 
How are you, Lauren? I'm all right. But Jedro's sister's outside. No, I haven't talked to her yet. But she's insisting to know the whereabouts of her brother. I don't know what to tell her. Make out a death certificate for Harry Jedro. Harry Jedro is dead. Oh, but Charles, he's... Alive. No, my dear. Jedro is dead. Hi. The doctor wanted to see me. Sit down, Natalie, and I'll tell him you're here. Natalie's waiting for you. Oh. Well, I must say you're very tough, Natalie. I dare say you're wondering why I had you come in here this afternoon. Well, I think I have some very good news for you. Yes? During the last three months, you've made tremendous strides. In fact, your improvement has been more than excellent. I'm so happy, Doctor. Yes, in all my experience, I've never seen such rapid progress. Natalie, you're almost well enough to leave. Oh, that's wonderful. When can I go home? Oh, very soon. Before I let you go, though, there is one final treatment necessary. I'll arrange for the treatment for tonight. Then when can I go? In a day or two. Now I suggest you go to your room and relax until it's time. All right, Doc. How many times do I have to tell you I don't want no dinner? You eat. I ain't hungry. Don't worry, Lobo. He'll eat. Nobody's gonna tell me what to do. Not that ape. You gotta eat, Danny. It's good for you. How about you? You hungry? This is the first time I've been hungry in a long time. Uh, good to hear it. You know, it's a real pretty smile. You wanna use it more often. By the way, Danny, have you seen Natalie? No. I haven't seen her since this morning. Good evening. I'm delighted to see you so happy. I thought you might like a little music with your dinner. That sounds wonderful, Doctor. This is one of those rare times when I'm in the mood for music. I don't need no music. You're not alone here, Danny. You've got to think about the other people. Lobo. All right, Lobo. You may take it to her now. I'm sorry Natalie missed this. I wonder why she wasn't at dinner. So do I. I'll see if I can find out. Don't you enjoy the doctor's music? Yeah, sure, but uh, we just finished dinner and we missed Natalie. I thought I'd go upstairs and see if she was all right. Natalie asked for a tray in her room this evening. That's a privilege you all have. Huh? Thanks. She had a tray up in her room. Is she all right? I don't know.
Send them all to bed. Time for go to bed. Aye, it is late. Shall we retire? Good night, Mark. Used to the place, Mark. Huh? Your room is over here. Thanks. Did you sterilize my number 23 scalpel? Yes, Charles. This is the night, Sharon. I'm certain of it. The final test. After all the years of preparations and calculations and failures. All pointing us toward this operation. That new mobile cathode should rule out any chance of a voltage variation. It must, Charles. It will. We must succeed. All right. Administer the anesthetic. Three scalpel. Brow. Sponge. Now, the gland.
literature. Yes? It's Margo. Open the door, Grace. I've got to see you. What is it? I want to get you away from this house. You don't know it, but you're in danger. Danger? Why? Dr. Conway isn't the kind of a man you think he is. I don't understand. I just checked Natalie's room. Her clothes are all there, but she's gone. She's been gone for quite a while. I don't like it, Grace. Conway's a madman. I'm afraid he's done something to her. How can you say that? In eight hours, we'll know the answer. Grace, he's got some fantastic idea he can work miracles to keep people young forever. He actually told me he wants to use us as guinea pigs. He's even been talking about sacrifices for science. Now, with a mind that warped, there's no telling what he's thinking. I won't believe that. The doctor's trying to help me. I can't accept what you're saying, Mark. You've got to accept it. Your whole life depends on it. Look, first thing in the morning, I want you to go and see Conway and get your release. I don't care what you tell him, but somehow convince him you have to go home. I'm here under my own doctor's advice. And I'm going to stay until I'm well. Don't you understand? You have to get out of this house before it's too late. And you'd better get out of this room before Dr. Conway finds you here. I don't think he'd approve. Grace, I... Fifty percent. Fifty percent. Reading? Plus two point three. Twenty-six and a quarter. Twenty-six and a quarter. Fifty percent. Fifty percent. Reading? Plus two point four. Increase two percent. Increase two percent. Reading? Plus two point four eight. Increase slowly to fifty-five. Increase slowly to 55. Red alert. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Every precaution.
Don't be discouraged, Charles. You'll succeed. All these years of study and hard work can't go unrewarded. Good morning, Chris. Mark? Good morning, Doctor. Doc? I'm going on upstairs. Grace, I'll see you after a while. Will you come into the common room, my dear? I'd like to talk to you. My dear, you're to be congratulated. Your condition is improved. If you continue in this manner, you'll be entirely well in no time. I hope so. Come and sit down. Tell me, Grace. What does a young couple talk about when they walk in the garden? I'm afraid I'm a little too old to remember. Many things. Mostly about Natalie. Really? Well, what about her? Mark seems worried about her. Why? He seems to think she's ill or something. Nonsense, my dear. She made a perfect recovery and I released her. I drove her to the train this morning myself. She left rather early, so she asked me to make her goodbyes. I'm so happy for her. Grace. You've made such fine progress, I... I'd hate to have anything stand in your way. As your doctor, I must ask you to limit your association with Mark. Why? Well, this will... No matter how I phrase it, it'll sound harsh to you, but... Mark is a dangerous man. Dangerous? Yes, very dangerous. There's no telling what he might do. I don't understand. My dear... Mark is a sick man. He's suffering an advanced persecution complex. Any incident might provoke him into committing an act of violence. I'm watching him carefully and trying to help. You must help too, my dear. How can I help? By avoiding any unnecessary conversation. Then he'll be free of any entangling emotions which might harm him. I'll do as you ask, Doctor. Good. We must look after you too, my dear. You're so good to me, Dr. Conway. As I should be. You need understanding and care. One so lovely as you should have the understanding and protection of a friend. But above all, you must disregard anything Mark may tell you. I understand, Doctor. Leave that girl alone. What does that mean? Grace, leave her alone. You're sounding like a jealous woman. That's exactly what I am, Charles. I love you, and I'm not going to have anything come between us. Sharon. Sharon. Two people striving for such a great scientific achievement should not be quarreling. Nothing should ever come between us. Charles. Yes? Why can't she be our next subject? She's almost a perfect specimen, and you said we needed a good subject for our next experiment. Not yet. Why not? It isn't the right time. Now be assured, when the time comes, I shall not hesitate.
What do you want? Grace, I'm sorry to break in like this, but it's my only chance to prove I'm telling you the truth. Please get out. Uh, don't you understand? I'm trying to help you. Look, I've got positive proof. Proof you'll have to believe. Please leave me alone. Now, look, I don't have time to argue with you. Here, put on this robe and come with me. Before this night's over, you're going to be convinced I'm right. There was a man here not ten minutes ago. Mark, please take me back upstairs. I tell you, he was right here. Mark, please. No, Grace, not until we find that guy. see her like this, but now maybe you'll believe me. How could he? Let's get you out of here. Uh... Oh, Natalie. Grace. Grace, we haven't time to think about that now. We've got to figure some way to get you out of this house. I'm so afraid. I know. Now, listen. When I go out of this room, you lock the door and don't open it for anybody until I get back. You understand? Not for anybody. I won't, Mark. Good, good. Lock the door.
Who is it? Mark. Open up. What do you want? Daddy, let's get one thing straight. I didn't come here to listen to you complain. You're in a jam and I want to get you out of it. I don't need any help. Yes, you do. Now listen to me. Conway's been working some crazy experiments here. He plans to use all of us as guinea pigs. I don't believe it. All right, don't. But stop and think, Danny. For once, really think. What's become of Natalie? Where is she? What's happened to her? Now, if I had time, I'd take you downstairs and show you. I've seen her. She's in the cellar, and I've seen what Conway's done to her. He's turned her into a... Well, a God knows what. She's all twisted. Her face looks like something out of a nightmare. Why would he do a thing like that to Natalie? Who knows why? Nothing matters to Conway but his crazy ideas. And believe me, Danny, what he's done to Natalie is only a sample of what he'll do to you, me, or anybody else he gets his hands on. All right. All right, well, what can we do about it? You can save your neck. You can get out of this house before it's too late, before Conway turns you into some kind of a horrible freak. How? How? I've already tried. I know, but don't worry about that. You do what I tell you, you'll get out all right. Look, it's 12.45. You go to bed and pretend you're asleep. At exactly 2 o'clock, you come downstairs. Grace and I will meet you there. Okay. 2 o'clock. I'll be there. You be on time. Yeah, yeah. I'll be there. Have you just been downstairs? No, I've been in my room. Why? Are you sure? Of course. Is there something wrong, Charles? Nothing. Nothing at all. Charles, I'm worried about you. You've been working too hard. Is there something I can do to help you? Yes, please leave me alone. Why don't you try to get some rest? You'll feel so much better. Perhaps you'd like a glass of warm milk. I'm not a child. I won't be pampered or mothered. You need your rest, Charles. I need nothing that I do not wish to need. Good night, Sharon. shadows to you, clear of the house. Once you're at the highway, you'll be safe. I don't have to tell you both to move as fast as you can. What about you, Mark? Well, I'll make sure Conway doesn't follow. I'll catch up to you later. You sure you'll be okay? Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. Now get out of here. Oh, and Danny. Yeah. Take good care of her. Huh? Yeah, okay. Well, is 
Is this the way to repay my hospitality? Lobo, Sharon, thank you. <clears throat> I admit your scheme was very clever, but I can't enjoy watching my kindnesses abused. I suppose I should have turned you over to the police in the first place. Would it surprise you all to know that Mark is an escaped killer and a thief to whom I offered sanctuary? It's true. And you, Grace. The fact that you turned against me is the greatest shock of all. That could have been a convincing story, Doc, but now it's too late. Why don't you just tell them why they're really here? Take them away. Downstairs, Laveau. Sharon, see that they're secure and then join me upstairs. Not you, my dear. Keep going, Mark. Upstairs. Keep them here till I come back. Understand? Danny, take a look at this. That's Natalie. Follow my play. I've got an idea. Watch yourself. Hey, Curly. Seen a sleepy beauty in there? You know, just like in a storybook, where the girl is real pretty, like Natalie. And she's sleeping all the time, because she had a spell put on her by this giant in the castle. This giant? Now, this giant, he's got a bull. And the bull's name is Ferdinand. Ferdinand? Yeah, Ferdinand. Now, Ferdinand, he doesn't like the beautiful red cape that the giant has. So he tries to get it. But the giant, he just takes the cape and he waves it right in front of the bull. Now the bull, he gets madder and madder. And he rushes right at the cape. But the giant, he just takes the cape and he throws it over the bull. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'll follow you. Are you sure you can make it alone? Yeah, yeah. I'll be all right. Go on. She's well under. Prepare her. Stay right there, Conway. You think that gun is really necessary? We could talk so much easier if you put the gun away. Maybe so, but you keep your hands on top of the desk. Very well, Mark. The situation seems to have altered slightly. More than slightly. I've got the gun. Conway, how long do you think you could go on destroying people before somebody stopped you? Destroy? I destroy? This is from you, a killer. A man hunted by the police. I was about to give the world the gift of eternal life. Eternal life? You deny you mutilated innocent human beings, you transformed them into creatures so hideous they'd be better off dead? Deny? I deny nothing. Who are you to question the usefulness of my experiments in relation to the future? I'm holding a new civilization in my hand. A happy world about to be thrown open to a humanity that would die. And not you nor anyone else can stop me. Save that for the jury. Jury? Oh, but of course. I must admit you took me in completely. A policeman. I never thought it. You weren't supposed to. Let's go. Now, I suppose I have no choice. Emergency. Get me to the sheriff's office, quick. Hello, Casey. This is a code three, Lieutenant Houston. Now, look, I want you to notify Reagan, get the boys out here fast. Yeah, they know where I am. Now, get them rolling.
Reagan! Yeah. What's the pitch, Mark? It's Conway. He was out there somewhere. I lost him. You better split up. Kennedy, you go that way. George, I've got an idea. I'm going to check that out. All right, good deal. Come on, let's go. Somebody saved the state some money. Who's this guy? A fellow named Jedro. Conway tried to bury him alive. You know, it's ironic. I pulled him out of his grave and he ends up like this. Oh, and this is Conway's assistant. Dr. Gilchrist, what did you do with Miss Thomas? She's in the lab. George, get the cuffs on him. Captain, you'd better come down to the cellar. What is it, Ed? you got to see for yourself. If I told you, you'd never believe it. Okay, let's go. Grace. Grace, wake up. Come on. Snap out of it now. Come on. That's a little better. That's it. It's all right. Everything's all right now. There's nothing more to worry about. I've checked him. He's dead. This way, sir. This way. institutions will take good care of them for the rest of their lives. <laughs> good Lord. What if they do live forever? <laughs> Lieutenant, who is this? Lieutenant? Captain Reagan, this is Miss Grace Thomas. She was one of Conway's patients. Grace Thomas? <laughs> and how glad I am to see you, young lady. You had us dragging the bay for two days. We almost had you marked off as a suicide. Suicide? Yeah. Well, that's a good way to explain her disappearance. Captain, you better get out a pickup on a Dr. Lauren Wright. He's the fellow that brought Miss Thomas here, and he probably brought the others, too. Yeah, I'll get out a call right away. Come on, Miller, we have a lot of work to do. Lieutenant Houston. Mark. Mark, will you please take me home? Yeah. Yeah, of course I will. That's part of my job. I see. Hey. <laughs> 